Hey guys. <laughs> hey, McLeod. What's up? Oh, fuck you. Fuck you, Eric. You know that the only reason people watch this show anymore is for my looks. Fuck you, Daddy. Betraying me. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, like, uh, if you're watching this in a rerun like this, the chat source is not for us. Well, today's episode is supposed to be a follow-up on some of the stuff we did with uh, Carneros, right? When we were uh, discussing the, the, the general uh, thing about MMOs. And what actually got me to invite uh, Nerdslayer on the show today is the fact that I was doing a lot of research for that stuff when we were discussing MMOs in general. And that's how I actually stumbled upon all of his uh, amazing uh, Death of a Game videos where he's basically going into the research of how a game actually came out and how it evolved and how it eventually cheated off and died. Um, and a lot of the, the content is pretty much on the topic of MMOs in general. And then when he recently just launched this amazing uh, trolley uh, video about EVE Online, I thought that we pretty much have to get him on to actually uh, share this whole thing with the with you guys and with the audience, so he can get even more uh, trolled by uh, EU players. Oh, by the way, I just have a reject here. Uh, it would not be the Push Talk show if I didn't script the sound at least once. So everything I said in the beginning is in there, and we're not going to fix it <laughs> because it's a beautiful thing. Technology is hard. So anyways, um, just to uh, let Nerf Slayer uh, go on, could, could you tell us uh, what inspired you to actually make that video because you've talked about Eve before and specifically you I think you said uh, you did a video about uh, PvP MMOs in general which is what really inspired me because you then said in the end of it you said well all these games tend to fail except Eve <laughs> it's the only game that's actually managed to do a proper PvP MMO model uh, and then uh, I just had to sandbox do. PvP. Let's, yeah, exactly. let's not let, let's not generalize it. It is a sandbox PvP. It's a real PvP. Right? Yeah, on almost every level, you could say. Right. So, so even uh, though you're not an Eve player, what what inspires you, and how do you get that information mm -hmm. about Eve? What inspires you to actually add that as a a, a, a little uh, side note that. This is the special game that, that no one plays. Yeah, uh, so I think it, it all starts from the first MMO that I ever, I guess major MMO that I ever played was Star Wars Galaxies. So I I always knew that space combat uh, was pretty, yeah, exactly. I, I always knew space combat was like this really cool thing to me, but I didn't know it until I had played it, you know, that I really enjoyed having the idea of being able to marry land with with space right and a friend of mine was like after they had shut star wars galaxies down he was like well you should play eve it's it's got pretty much all the same things as uh star wars galaxies except it's more focused on pvp so i was like well i mean that sounds great and loaded up the game and i mean i i tried multiple times to, to keep playing and I just I could not even finish playing and and it was it was so like heartbreaking for me which is the funny thing about you know some of the E fans not being so happy about my video is that I really did try I right like I love PvP games and more specifically PvP sandboxes and without a doubt Eve has stood the test of time it's been around for what is it 15, 15 years. years yeah 15 years now if your game that's a hardcore PvP sandbox can last 15 years. You're doing something right. So then that's kind of what, you know, got me to want to explore it even more. 
And I've been asked multiple times to make videos on Eve, usually because, funny enough, uh, one of the moderators and then one of my longtime followers of the channel are mega Eve fans. So they're always telling me about Eve and about Star Citizen and about these new games that are coming out, uh, more specifically sci-fi games. And I decided to do a video, and I, I couldn't think of a better way to put the video than to say that uh, it's essentially the best PvP MMO that you're probably not going to play. <laughs> and I heard that exact quote uh, from a friend of mine where he told me, another friend that liked sandbox MMOs, he's like, man, I just wish we could play EVE. And, uh, and then he said something along the lines of, that really is just the best PvP MMO, right? And then I and then I said to him, I was like, that we're never going to play. <laughs> it kind of so reminds just... me of uh, of um, the scene in uh, in Fight Club where they have to stand on the porch for hours on end to actually be let in, <laughs> and and most people actually <laughs> fail. It's just right. a side question, like derailing this entire conversation. Do we know when the 15 year anniversary shit is getting? Uh... All the gifts and shiz are getting distributed. Yeah, last weekend. What do you have? Oh, you have? I had. Okay, I need to log on then. Okay, yeah. continue. <laughs> wait, wait. Are you are you you know showing Captain us exactly Day. what Nerd Slayer is saying? Do, do you not play? Do I play this game? No. What? No. Well, let's put it this way: it, it certainly is a game that you don't have to log in to play if you're playing it at a certain <laughs> level, right? I mean, does, mm, does Mittens true. actually? That's, have a, that's to log a meta in? answer to my question, I guess, yeah. right? Yeah, it's one of those weird games where you can play and not actually be subscribed to the game, and it's really fucking weird. One, one of the jokes in every corporation I've been in, as soon as you become a director of a corporation in EVE, that's when you go AFK from the game. As soon as you become a corporate director, anything that requires you to log on, you essentially lose the game. There's a reason why there is a saying, the only way to win EVE is to just not log on. So I think when they first developed the game, right, if you trained every skill every day, every minute you possibly can, I think the total duration to completely tra train a character was 15 years, if memory recalls. Anybody remember that? That sounds yeah. about right. If you started with the uh, skill training skills. Right. Yeah, if you started with the skill training skills. <laughs> and didn't skip, it, like, didn't miss a beat in terms of, uh, you know, changing. Yeah. And you're a Kaldari character. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah impossible. Can't. Now it's something like what twenty one years or something stupid. Yeah, the skill tree that you strain, uh, skill tree that you put up, Nerd Slayer was hilarious. I'm sitting there going, "That's insane!" But yeah, that's what we go through. Yeah, um, I think at one point early on in development, and this was a big reason why I never got into the game as well, was I think they changed the mechanics. Uh, but at the time it took you around six months to get, I guess, a viable ship for being more than just, I guess, what you would call a drone in a fight. Does tackle. anyone remember? Fast tackle. 30, yeah, right. 30 35 okay. to 40 days to become fast tackle, right? Okay. But, but way back then, it was extremely novel to have a game that was not experience-based, where you couldn't grind, where you had to actually passively train right. skill. So mm -hmm. everyone was pretty much on the same page. You couldn't like face roll and do no life or stuff, right? So that- You whole... couldn't catch up if you had time placed in, you were pretty much guaranteed, at least to some degree, some more experience over another person yeah. in terms of skills, but. Yeah, it, yeah it, there was a the benefit from being in early, right? So all the things about early access and uh, uh, special uh, uh, hashtag Eve Online is pay to win. stuff. No, it's not pay to win. It, it, it's <laughs> more like if you were in there from the beginning, you get that founder's uh, benefit, and it's actually genuine in Eve, right? That that really mattered in the day. Uh, it, it of course got totally screwed with the skill uh, skill point uh, farming. Yeah. But before that, if you had a ten year old character, it was superior. Of course, generalizing uh, into all skills, so you become this jack of all trades. It's not really a benefit because you can't do everything in E. It's just well, a small benefit uh, and advantage on everyone yeah. else. It, it begs the question, and I know CCP has tried to solve this in various ways, but. It begs the question now, shouldn't, you know, would it be beneficial to EVE as a game 
to allow new players to begin with enough skill points that they equal six months of training and then just to apply them. I think they already have. Well, like, they they kind of can do. They, well, they already upgraded. Like, the, the issue with EVE was always, like, the barrier to entry. Like, because mm -hmm. as soon as you started, you you know, there was the whole joke when I first started. Like, you would have to literally sit in a station with, like, plus four implants training nothing but core skills until you could really get out and, you know, start training what you wanted to fly. Um, I think the barrier to entry to any degree has been lowered significantly. One with alpha clones, with alpha states, and then two with mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the skill injectors. Well, yeah, I, I, just, I, I, just I, I have the, to disagree. The end level chasing is a mistake. I think I think there's a huge uh, problem in allowing people to speed up to end level, uh, the equivalent of getting a free 100 level character in World of Warcraft, because you can't play it. You, you can't come into Eve on day one. Uh, and then speed ahead to be able to fly supers and titans. It's just stupid. It's, well, it's not supposed to be like well, no, stupid, but can... I don't think that's yeah, necessarily I mean, a problem. It's not I a think problem. It, it, it destroys one of the unique aspects that you had to take your time to get into the game and and yeah. progress uh, gradually. But you're not in a yeah, super or they, titan in six cost, months, right? There, there, there is this underlying, there's this kind of like from the from outsiders from certain people like inside the game there is this kind of feeling that like you know sp is everything right but we've constantly seen that people who don't actually under understand the game fundamentally or understand how to utilize certain that, mechanics you know that they're going to be using with the ships that they're going to be flying end up you know end up losing you know end up having yeah. that ship taken away from them very fucking quickly it's just like you know, buying your, SP your is position not, in SP the is Super not League, right? and You can't it. fucking play with these people. So, so you're just buying a position on the field, running around being an idiot with people that mm -hmm. actually know how to play the I game. Would, I would like to point out that Karma Fleet newbies who are like three months <laughs> in and already have a Nyx are already better than a lot of the people that I fly with. As far it's... as, you know, at least being safe. Yeah, They're being really boring because they're only being safe and they're not like you know, dropping their titans on literally everything. Uh, come join AMOC if you want to do that. We're we, recruiting. We drop our but titans they, they, on okay, our own they, people. They potentially skipped one of the important parts, right? Because usually when you progressed slowly, you try to fly everything, right? So now they go straight into flying Nyx, and they haven't actually had enough experience in everything else. And if they go up and, and fly bigger stuff and do FCing, they end up, they might actually be good at it, but they end up FCing, but they don't have the experience of actually flying the ships that they are F FCing. But they are being mentored and tutored by people who have. You know, they, they, they it's not like they're, it's not like they're the individuals in this. The they're actually, are. they're in, your, yeah, your it's not like sec, they're individuals. Your like pubby isn't, and, you know, exactly, at that point, CCP the one... is getting their, their $3,000 or whatever it takes to, like, I don't know if it's $3,000 anymore. Yeah, but you understand, they're not the ones that are, like, suddenly going straight into a Nyx. Like, you're talking about sort of the people in Karma Fleet. And so in, in Karma Fleet, I'm sure there yeah, are there some. There may be sort of, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna take the law of probabilities and say there's at least one. There's well, yeah, there's going to be outliers, right? But the so, majority of people, when you're talking about people in Karma Fleet that have come to the game fairly recently and are in the Knicks already, like they're in a an environment where they're going to be tutored and taught on how on how the game is, uh, you know, how how the game works and functions. Well, and that's uh, one and of get the... up to speed on that kind of thing a hell of a lot faster than people who, you know, who are those outliers. Yeah, and Nerdslayer, going back to your video, right? I mean, you are 100% right when you talk about the PvE gameplay being boring as shit. But the, is. the number of people who do it just to get in-game currency for hours on hours on hours every day is amazing, right? Because it's I easy. Would... But, I mean, going back to, to your video, I mean, did you do any um, kind of group-oriented stuff i mean you said you knew people in the game did they like help you or did they Hold just on, Eric, leave i'd like out? to actually ask nerd slayer like a follow-up question to that with okay, Eve but... pvp being so slow like having to jump around systems where do you find in your opinion the 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 excitement of eve pvp doing i mean i think um what's always been telling to me whenever i talk to people about eve's combat especially people who kind of have defended it because 
you know, even though I just made this video, I've had this criticism for a long time. I just never, mm -hmm. you know, really brought it up. But like, for me, you know, my, my backstory, the other sandbox PVP MMO that I played was Darkfall. And I mean, I played it, you know, quite religiously. And we have a lot of overlap in between the two games. As, weirdly enough, we have the opposite problems that Eve does in a lot of ways. Uh, but in regards to how I enjoy the PvP in EVE or understand the enjoyment of it, it all comes around or it's all predicated around everything else except the actual combat itself, which is very different from Darkfall because Darkfall for me was always, and, and most people who've played it can attest to this, the fun in the game, yeah, it's the adrenaline, it's the you can lose your stuff because in that game it's full loot, so you're losing everything if you die. Uh, you're not going to get sit in a pod or just lose your money, right, and have to buy a new ship. Or, well, I guess most people in Eve have multiple ships, but you get what I mean. That's like the time sink. You could actually lose all of your stuff, but the combat itself was also really rewarding to where even after your blood was pumping from surviving a one v one or whatever else, you know, some big battle you were also like, well, the combat was also fun. And with Eve, it's like, although it has the same, you know, adrenaline rush, this uh, has way more politics, for example, which is one thing it has over probably any other game, which is why I reason, well, at least a reason why I think it's so successful is because of all the systems that are around uh, the combat. But then I just can't say the same thing about Eve that when I've had a fun interaction or, for example, someone linked, I think it was uh, you, uh, Caleb, that linked the, um, no, somebody else did, the Rooks and Kings series on YouTube. Yeah, where, I linked that to you. Right, where it, it it's very voiced and they speed it up and they make it Clarion very, yeah, yeah. They, they, they make it very exciting to watch. And that's the type of stuff that I watch in Eve and I get really into it. Because when I'm looking at it from an outside perspective in, it's like, look at all these stakes. Like, I recognize when there's stakes on the line, and I really appreciate that. But then if you put me in the actual, you know, pilot seat, so to say, uh, then I'm probably going to be more frustrated than anything. It feels like a lot of uh, players in modern gaming want the experience of drama, but they don't have the stomach for how long it actually takes to build stuff like mm -hmm. that up, right? Uh, just to, to, to compare to when when you're watching uh, documentaries about World War One or World War Two, right? It feels as if oh, all these things happen, and it's almost like playing uh, Civilization or an RTS. But in real life, it took fucking days and months and years to 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 have these battles and 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 positions geopolitically, right? And if you want that in a game, it has to do the same things. Maybe not that slow, but you can't speed it up to a civilization game because then no one can actually keep up because everyone needs to be involved. Are players not necessarily wanting the time gap or are they not necessarily comfortable with the consequences that can come with those dramas? I think it's more so the, the, the time investment. Again, I, uh, Darkfall mm -hmm. has a lot of similarities to Eve and... One of the big similarities, and this was actually told to me by EVE fans, was that in EVE, you never really see solo PvP as like a big feature of the game. And that's because it's like you could put all this time into preparing or looking for a fight, right? And get jumped by five or six people. And that's not really fun, right? Or or you just keep looking and you never really come across that fight in the same way. And, and Darkfall had the exact same issue where it was like, Sometimes you don't want the big political fights, right? Because those, as you said, take a long time to happen. So you'll log on before your your clan is about to have some big battle, and maybe you'll just roam around for some practice or PvP or whatever else. And then that's the stuff that I think really turns a lot of people off, especially people who might not be uh, ready to put in all the time to have those big guild engagements. Is like they just want to go do something and have the rush of adrenaline and skill now and you know darkfall could never solve that problem because the map was too big so essentially they were after the population died the map was far too big for you to have those organic interactions with people but you get that that's uh that's that kind of thing is a um it, it's it's kind of like a it's something that happens with all sandbox like proper sandbox mmos like it's uh, a proper sandbox mmo is a massive time sink for right. people well, um and, and i see that with other like uh mmos like 
proper sandbox MMOs that um, I think you've played a few times as well, like uh, for example, Rust. Like right. Rust is a Rust is a serious time sink as well, and it's it's because it's I would say it's very close to being a, a you know a sandbox MMO. I'm sorry if you're not playing Rust with like heavily modded, you're not you're not doing Rust right with your own like heavily modded here's, server. Here's, heavily modded server like one thousand times. And folks who watch the show will not find this comment from me unusual, right? Where I think Eve fails is explaining where to find these things. So everything that we've kind of gone over exists in Eve, right? Um, the uh, the solo PvP is there. The the um, the PVE is there, but it's boring in certain cases, right? So if you take PvP PVE out there into uh, more risky areas like wormhole space or something like that where you have to do pve as a group um, and you might lose i've lost probably three or four carriers uh, in my lifetime over uh, doing large-scale pve in wormholes as well as roaming right with a small group of guys five to ten guys um, you know it's just like getting together you know to go do something so eve fails by showing players and getting players into these things Eve fails by saying, if you want to find this stuff, oh, go find it on your own. There's no roadmap. That's weird. Actually, isn't that, isn't that uh, the point of, an, uh, of, an, uh, of a sandbox game, that you shouldn't have any hand-holding? Uh, but here's the thing, yeah. right? Yeah, but the thing is, as, as No Slayer has kind of pointed out in his other videos, like the, the hand-holding like, ends up being put onto static websites on, online, and you can find it you know, by a very quick Google search, and it ends up being almost pointless. Like... Yeah, you but... need the PVE kind of aspect to be um, reactive and, you know, not really, really, you know, um, linear. Yeah. Just to segue a little bit, because one of the important things that Nerdslayer talked about in his uh, PVP MMO sandbox uh, video is the wolves uh, versus sheep, right? And I think this ties directly into the whole PVE discussion, right? Because at least in the original core ideology of eve they had the balance right they integrated the, the the sheep and the wolves so there was an interdependency and i think this is pretty much why eve works but what i've seen is that eve has been trending toward more and more uh i don't know casual friendly gameplay and disconnecting that interdependency right so now people can do their own stuff and and they can come in as wolves and feel like wolves, but they end up uh, over uh, killing the sheep and they, they leave the game because there's no co uh, interdependency anymore, or at least it's very subtle and only on the geopolitics aspect. So would you like to expand on that, Nurse Lair? Because all the other games end up dying when there's too many wolves and all the sheep fuck off, right? Right, yeah, that's that's kind of where, although I criticize Eve's uh, combat, where in a weird way, it actually has a boon in the sense that it's kind of better that there's, it's not so demanding mechanically on somebody, like my ability to move my hands, my ability to react and aim and stuff and stuff like that, because it, it allows for so much more play style. So even amongst, I'm sure you guys can attest to this, even amongst Eve player wolves, there's probably people who are, aren't like your good player, right? But they can still fit a role or fill a role within the game. That's another thing that I think Eve does so fantastically is like there's so so many different types of roles and they basically have to work together in, in some big type of fight for, for things to work, right? Uh, whereas, you know, the other games that I've mentioned before, uh, PvP MMOs, their problem is kind of like they don't have the role for somebody who just maybe wants to support or maybe wants to uh, scout or whatever else, right? That type of stuff. They don't have roles for those people. And then when that's expounded upon by uh, the economy or the other activities in the game not being fun enough for people to not want to just PvP 24-7, because ultimately speaking, the sheep, it's not that they don't want to PvP. It's just that they only want to PvP on their terms generally, right? So like that's mm -hmm. usually, I think, when they get frustrated is when they're being killed when they don't believe that they should be killed or whatever else scenario like that. But the biggest culprit I think in, in into the that goes into these games failing is that once a sandbox like we love sandbox MMOs, 
but once they lose a certain amount of population, you know, mm -hmm. a ratio compared to the actual size of the map, that's when they run into a lot of problems. And I'm not as familiar with Eve as some of the other games, so maybe you guys can tell me if I'm wrong here, but with Eve, you have a little bit more instanced type of uh, establishment, so it's not like necessarily you're flying in open space endlessly, right? You have to make a jump or something like that to another mm -hmm. instance that has... To another system. Right, right. And so I think that's actually a really good thing about EVE versus just an open world game. Whereas they, you could live in this little part of the map over here, and then there's this entire other part of the map that you don't know if there's anybody there. So if you go roaming for PvP, you're not going to really find anybody. But back to the, the wolves thing specifically, if if the wolves have an ability to exploit the game in some way and i don't mean that even necessarily in a negative way per se but like in a way of they're just that much better in a straight mechanic sense i think that's when you have a lot of problems eve doesn't have that as much because while there's certainly a skill cap um i think they at least have some mechanics that can kind of keep uh the really experienced player away from killing somebody except i guess you can always get uh suicide bombed right like someone can just ram into you and, and kill you and essentially risk their ship but still do it just to cause you harm right that that happens in eve i know people I think that. okay never right. happens burn jita never happens in, in, in other games the win condition is biased towards the wolf right they get everything when they go to end mm, level and do all cool. the pvp and they get all the awesome gear and they get all the money and and pretty much every win condition is in the hands of the wolves whereas in eve you can actually have a win condition being a care bear being a sheep right because right, right. you are an industrialist you will be richer you'll be able to uh pretty much my joke is that sure there's people in in eve that are amazing at pvp but the ships that they fit I can fit them forever and just keep throwing them at them. And that's because I'm making money elsewhere, right? So right. so, so these things are, the, the interdependency is what makes EVE work. Whereas every other game I've played that's a sandbox PvP game, I've left because there is no win condition for people with my gameplay. Right, yeah, and I totally agree with that. And, and Darkfall had the biggest problem with that. That's why... Even though one of my big criticisms initially of Eve was the whole time gating system, I kind of almost feel like maybe that is necessary because when when Darkfall came out originally, it had an extraordinary grind, uh, which even if you play the game legit was hard to do, but people weren't playing it legit and they were finding ways to exploit a lot of things. And uh, when those people got so far ahead of everybody else, the the sheep never had a chance. Because not only were they behind in terms of the game, they were also behind in terms of skill. So Eve doesn't have that as much of a problem, or at least that's not as much of a problem in Eve because there's so many different roles that you can fit or you know fill in Eve. Mm -hmm. And yeah, these other games, the more they try and be so skill and mechanical and whatever else, all they end up doing in a lot of ways is just kind of sabotaging their game because although we might be critical of people who don't know pvp or don't respect it that much we need them in order to pay the bills and i think that's why you know maybe if they're bad decisions but ccp probably sees that they have to make some sort of switch in some way but maybe they don't understand ultimately well, what makes them work over you know another game it's it's a joke about uh the blacksmith and the knight right the the, the blacksmith that makes all the weapons and all the armor uh, is dependent on the, the knight being able to actually buy that or get that, right? But the dependency goes the other way as well. The, if the knight wants to go out and fight, he needs a blacksmith. But if you make it so that the knight can run around in a sandbox and just loot everything for free, right, then he will never need a blacksmith player. Ever. I was also going to, I was also going to actually uh, point out as well that a lot of the like much more PvP centric, uh, like sandboxy kind of games. Um, a lot of a lot of what scares a lot of or basically disincentivizes people who are more sheep or more kind of farming kind of uh, aspect kind of people is the fact that uh, you know the mechanics in those games are such that when you get killed, 
everything that you had drops. And the person who has who has killed you gets every single thing. It's not the case in Eve. In Eve, you know, there's that chance roll, that RNG roll of whether certain things on your ship or certain things in your cargo end up just dying. Like, you don't get that in other games. Um, and I think that's one of the other things that really helps the, like, foster and keep that kind of, um, you know, producer and uh, utilizer kind of uh, symbiosis. And even to the killer, there's the same problem, uh, like in real world uh, ecosystem, right? You have this this cheetah that kills its prey, but then the prey gets stolen <laughs> because it's not very <laughs> capable of defending itself. It's very good at killing, but it's not very good at defending itself. So then the lions or the hyenas will come and steal its prey. And it's the same in Eve, right? You get the loot, but you're not guaranteed that it's going to be yours because you have things like ninja looting. You have the fact that when you are doing PvP, you're also opening yourself up to risk of being attacked by someone else, right? So you got this whole ecosystem cycle kind of working in EVE. I do believe that they are undermining a lot of the core idea, but it bloody works. Right, yeah, and I think um, the reason why I'm not particular in whether or not I want a game that has full loot or like partial loot is as long as it has some loot. I, to me, that's the only way I feel like I could really care about something, right? Like, I think if a, in a PvP MMO, especially a sandbox, especially a sandbox, if the only thing you lose is just like five seconds until you respawn, that's just not a big enough reason to ever feel like a loss is a loss, right? And that's why people love Eve, even though they don't play Eve, is that everyone knows about the the different battles and the the headlines that are probably a bit cheesy to Eve players, but the ones that are like, you know, ship or guild loses a hundred dollars or five thousand dollars worth of ships or hundred thousand dollars worth of ships, like where people like to see that stuff because they're like, wow, like, one point one million dollars. Yeah. Right, they're like they <laughs> lost real life money, which means that this actually matters. And and uh, you know, obviously, <laughs> just because it's real life money doesn't mean we. It matters because it matters to you personally. But I just because think that that's like the thing that's attractive to other people is like yeah. there's it's, real it's, it's, it's nice. Yeah. It's nice, sort of grabbing like you know, sort of uh, like sort of attention grabbing headlines with like uh, when people equate that amount of in game currency to real money. Um, do you think maybe it actually detracts or basically uh, scares people away from potentially trying to actually play the game because they think that, like, you know, they have to invest money into the game and that it could be stolen by someone else? Like, or, you know, all of that money that they put into the game has can suddenly go up in smoke. Like, when in actual fact, it's literally just, it's not, that isn't actual money that's been in, that's been put into the game, like, actual right. Hard, hard currency, but it's you know it's just an equivalent in in game. Yeah, I think um, it's funny you say that. I never thought about that, but it, it it almost to me it sounds like it's more making Eve, or at least the perception about Eve, like a spectator sport instead of like a sport sport. You know, where you're gonna have players actually come in and try and learn the game, whereas like articles like that, although they're probably entertaining to most people uh, who don't play the game, it probably, like you said, it, it, it's a matter of like, well, this is just more reason that they wouldn't play the game, but can just watch and be like, oh, this is kind of cool. It so, would be yeah. nice if they if they use the term man hours instead, right? Because that's actually something that, that would make sense. How many players mm -hmm. have been involved in, in building the raw materials and, and actually playing the game? So how many game hours of wealth have been destroyed instead of real money because the real money conversion to man hours is a little bit iffy and it doesn't really work well, but that would make sense right it's an easy way of like yeah, you know it's... converting it to something that other people who don't play the game can right. understand but i think trying to convert it to man hours is going to be quite difficult unless we have something really stable and since yeah, we no. really don't like keeping things very stable especially when it comes to sort of the the baseline economy. You know what don't, I mean? Please yeah. don't trigger the uh, Eric. <laughs> don't say Fozzie. Please don't. So, Fossey, so, Fossey, Fossey. so here's 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 one of the things that happened recently that I find that is intriguing about Eve that you just can't get somewhere else, right? So Goon Swarm is 
you know, the Imperium essentially is, is fighting another entity in the game. And that entity has a certain doctrine of ships. And it turns out that <laughs> the ships they used us in the battle, we sold them. Yeah. So we're, we're killing the ships and then selling the, them, them back. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole concept of the meta of the market PvP is there. I mean, there are people in EVE that never undock. Right. You can play that's and that's one of the things in the game that I find fascinating. Right. Just like Caleb says, it's a game that supports his play style. The problem with Eve is that it supports so many play styles and it's hard to get in the groove of understanding which one is yours and where to find it. Right. Um, you can just play the market. You can hire people to ship your goods that you bought cheap in one station to another station where they're more expensive to sell them. You can't do that in, in other games. It's just amazing to me that people yeah, actually think, play that game that way. Right. I think that's why Camelot Unchained was uh, and still is very interesting to me because I think they finally realized, uh, you know, a developer finally realized that the key, sort of like Caleb was saying, to keep a sandbox PvP MMO going is you've got to have this like ecosystem, you know, where, where one part's mm -hmm. feeding the other part. And I think that's like the biggest issue with PvP MMOs that I've played. It's just like, there's really no reason to like Warhammer, for example, you know, everyone knows how much of a failure that game was. And I think one of the biggest reasons it was a failure and probably a reason why I don't like planet side two either is that even though you lost some of your land it didn't really matter right it didn't really change the way you played the game and i think that's sort of like eve can make real consequences more so than just losing you know goods that you have because they can actually say well because maybe you lost this pivotal battle and now you don't have the resources you need or whatever else you can't then go and take some other place whereas in a game like warhammer you try for one keep you lose, you try for another keep. You know, all you're losing is time. You're not losing actually anything in the game. And there's no way that you could, for example, set up some proxy system where you're trying to, you know, zap people out of uh, hyperspace or whatever else and create some sort of barrier from keeping people from getting away, right? Th those are things that you can do in like a very in depth, like space game, like Eve. Whereas in these other games, it's almost like because they're so gameplay specific. They don't have those uh, top-down strategy and diplomacy aspects that Eve does. I think yeah, that's, that's sort of that 4K almost uh, and planning, if you will. Right. Yeah, I think, but I think joke, those... uh, I'd like to to point out uh, that mm -hmm. ties into the whole sci-fi and and space exploration. If you guys might remember, way back in uh, 80s, 90s. They, they try to do these biodomes, right? Where they try to, to isolate an ecosystem in a dome uh, to be able to make habitation uh, possible on planets and stuff like that. And all of them fail, right? Because th there's just not enough biodiversity and, and enough uh, cyclical stuff happening inside that dome to make it work. So they all fail eventually, where, whether it was too much carbon dioxide production or not enough nutrients uh, and all of these things. And it's funny that all these game uh, developers are trying to create an ecosystem that, that makes PvP work. And the only game that's actually managed to do something remotely like a success is EVE. It's, but, it's, but I it's think... interesting to me because, sorry, uh, I, was, I just wanted to say quickly that I almost feel like there's a bit of like some weird looking glass going on where it's like, I feel like some Eve fans or players don't really look at the market as a whole in terms of other MMOs because they're just like so married to their game. But it happens the same way in terms of other games looking at, they might look at Eve and be like, oh, this is kind of cool or oh this, but they never actually wonder or ask the question of like, okay, why is this game working? You know, because they're kind of just like, oh, Eve is just a spreadsheet simulator. You know, they're not so worried about that sort of stuff. But I feel like I, I, if I were to be able to talk to Mark Jacobs, for example, working on Camelot Unchained, I'm almost, I almost guarantee that he would tell me a lot of things about Eve Online that they do well. Because you, ha you have to realize that even if but, it's But why not can't your they game, copy it then? Why are they so bad at copying well, the core essentials ask, of the well, game? I think 
when you try to ask that question, you have to first ask, what are the core essentials that are making Eve so uh, Eve? Like what, one of the things that draw uh, that drew me into the game way back uh, in like 2002 was when I logged in and I saw their market interface. Right, the fact that this market is exactly like real world stock markets and real world commodities market with buy orders and sell orders and the whole supply and demand side and price finding. I know I'm getting a little bit nerdy here, but the point <laughs> is that it's a, it's a market that works. And no one out there has copied it. No one. They all have this auction house, fucking uh, one-sided seller-only market, and it doesn't work. You need to have both sides to have a speculative, long-term price-finding market. And no one has copied it. I don't understand why. Well, you know that uh, Galaxies learned the hard way with that. Star Wars Galaxies used to have probably one of the best economies and crafting systems you know, ever. But they made such a key change that just completely unraveled their crafting system. And, and what it was is they essentially uh, rendered vendors useless because they created a galactic uh, auction house. And so you could just purchase on there. It would be mailed to you, that sort of thing, like a normal auction house, which made all of these people who created these intricate settlements with, with traders and, and vendors all over the place that had all these different types of goods and Basically, the whole experience, all of that was was then essentially uh, removed, and it was just like you going to the auction house, a lifeless box, and then just like it pops out things when you give it money. So tragically, uh, this is similar to what has been happening in Eve over the last five, six years at least, where mm. it's gone more and more Jita centric. Right, everything is mm. only happening in Jita. I doubt. The economic reports uh, would like to disagree with you. Well, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about <laughs> the fact that there like used to, to, be, there used to be off hubs, right? There used to be uh, secondary hubs and, and a lot of trade going on with arbitrage and stuff like that. Uh, Amar each... would like to disagree with you. Yeah, but, but they're not on scale. <laughs> the point is there's hardly any money in arbitrage anymore, right? It's not an, a viable Friends market. Friends would like to disagree with you. <laughs> Caleb's not used to this. Yeah, but it's just wrong. It's uh, it's not compared <laughs> to to how things used to work. And then you have to talk about real value of things, and and yeah, it gets into a lot of nerdy stuff with markets. But the point is, everything goes through Gita, and everything is produced in. Well, Dell. That's how you'd like to disagree with you. I just said that all, 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 all product is, is is sourced in Dell, or these. 35% of uh, the entire uh, ecosystem. 16%. I'm going to go with Eric's number because... Because he just calculated it based on fiscal year 2018, <laughs> right? Yeah, but you're missing all the in invisible stuff, the stuff yeah. that's not seen. I'm just going off CCP's uh, numbers. Yeah, yeah, you can't see uh, all the stuff that's not uh, on market, doesn't hit the market. Yeah, it's terrible. Anyway, the point was that <laughs> that the centralization of a market has has the potential of destroying smaller ecosystems. And this it does, is something well, that I mean, seen. it's 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 something that's happening. Uh, you know, IRL, like you know, we're having these uh, global markets. Uh, you know, global kind of yeah. you know wholesale distributors and stuff like that, like uh, um, Alibaba and uh, Amazon and stuff like that. You know, it's kids. I mean, it's is there off, really uh, smaller? Nice right. small markets as well. Could but... GITA be like the New York Stock Exchange and there's really like not really anything else in the world that matches the stock exchange on Wall Street? Only if it's not a retailer. If it is if it's only bulk trading and potentially futures trading and stuff stuff like that, then GITA would be like uh, Wall Street. But the point is that that's not possible because there is no off hub market anymore. So if, without retail uh, uh, options and benefits, you don't get the benefits of uh, an exchange market. So the, the point I'm, I'm trying to make is that, that we see Eve trending towards the same thing. And, and the comparison with real life is very important because what we see in real life is an abundance economy growing up, right? We, we have abundance in real life. There's hardly any mm -hmm. scarcity anymore. Of course, it ties into the fact that when there's peace, it's easier to source stuff and then abundance kind of follows. But I don't want abundance economy in Eve because I want something to fight for. 
Well, I think, mm, like it, want it or not, I think an abundance economy of EVE is really coming, except for, you know, obviously the shit you need to grind for, dead space gear, faction gear. And then you get peace. Oh. There's no world wars if you have abundance. There's no need to fight. If, you do, if everyone gets everything, why would I want to fight my neighbor? This, this because we because... want to fight our neighbors to make uh, them buy our shit so that we can make more money off of uh, because losses. Be because CO2 is your neighbor and fuck CO2. There you go. Yeah, personal grudges. But the point is that in, in, in real life, the big struggles are always resource-based. It's always food or water or uh, living space, living realm. Um, but if you if you give everyone everything, why would they want to look at their neighbor. It's about relative poverty, right? If, if there is no uh, poverty or if the, the, the Gini coefficient is perfect, you don't need to struggle or immigrate or anything like that. It's not, it's not important. I mean, we just kind of let Init go up north in the fountain and take whatever they wanted, and they seem to be doing a pretty good job with that. You like being sem semi-independent, yeah. And, you know, we needed renters. I mean, we need renter space anyway, so. You guys are still using renters? What the fuck is wrong with you? Because we're not a, what, 12, 15,000 strong of kind of alliance? <laughs> Just work coal mine the fuck out of it. <laughs> I had a question think in regards to uh, anyway. your faction system in EVE. Mm -hmm. So it, if I make a character right now, I can essentially join another faction, right? Like pretty quickly. Right away. Yeah. Yeah. Right away. Okay. Yeah, that's Eve. another thing I think Eve does that these other games don't do. I mean, recently with the by, the... by faction, do you mean like the NPC faction? Or right, like the right. Empire factions? Okay. NPC factions, yeah. Because I, ultimately when it's a... You know, there's a difference between a realm versus realm game and a clan versus clan game. And Eve at its core is clan versus clan, right? But has realm versus realm aspects to it with the factions. It's, it's, it's literally like you start off in the realm versus realm situation. And then okay. if you feel like you wanted to progress and make, like say if you, if you come into the game with some friends, you can, you all start off in the realm versus realm kind of thing. Um, and then you can make the decision to basically create your own clan. Right, and that's yeah. how it's kind of grown up. Like you can make the clan, and the clan can go off to areas that are, you know, not controlled by the realms um, oh, okay. in order to stake your territory. That right there, I mean, that in itself, I feel like is not explored because, as much as I love clan versus clan PvP games, I think it's far easier to balance uh, realm versus realm, and I think that's why. I mean, if you look at all the new games coming out uh, between Crowfall. And Camelot Unchained and Chronicles of Alaria. Like most of these games, I want to do clan versus clan systems. I think deep down, but they end up doing faction versus faction systems because I think it's just far easier to balance. But again, you know, mm -hmm. nobody seems to look at Eve and think, well, Eve allows you to start as a faction system, but like you said, graduate to clan versus clan warfare if you, you know, so choose. And that that's like huge, I think. Yeah, so Nerdslayer, yeah. have you ever have you ever looked at the sob system in Eve at all? Sorry, the the, the sovereign system. Yeah, the sovereign system. The, the ultimate end game for clan. So, it's sort of like territory holding, I guess. I've watched videos, games. but I guess I don't understand the specifics. So, so, I've seen them shooting the, you know. Yeah, so go to a <laughs> website called sov. Space and take a look at it. It's going to show you some very interesting maps and it's going to show you three in particular that you're going to care about the first one is the alliance solve map so you can join a corporation which is a clan or a guild right but those clans or guilds can bond together in an alliance but in the yeah. meta for instance goon swarm federation is part of the imperium and so is the initiative right initiative is part of the imperium right cloud and uh, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just like it's you know, and, and I, I but, think I but they're, actually a, provide yeah, a, uh... they're a completely different alliance. So, you're going to see a couple things here on Sob That Space, right? You're going to see the alliance influence map, and the center is what we call kind of low sec and high sec, where you've probably played the game around that's the it, that's the uh, that's the kind yeah. of 
starter um, area kind of yeah that's the starter area that's the that's the area controlled by the npc kind of alliances right so, and then the outside is all the systems that are actually owned by alliances and you have to do things to control and keep this ground right essentially um the one next to it is the coalition so right you begin to see alliances who are aligned Sorry, together. Sorry, is the sphere of influence, is it tax-based or resource-based? Like, what's the ultimate Space goal? Space-based. It, it's the, the influence as far as... So I'm, I'm assuming it's run by some sort of algorithm that right. calculates the number of systems and then just kind of, like, draws an artificial line around those systems. Okay. Right. So it's based it, on systems owned and the length of time that it's been owned by. Like, like if, if you've ever played Stellaris, this is, like, pre-2.0 right. Stellaris influence. Yeah. So you actually have to go into a star system, gain control of it, own it, put your flag up, essentially. Right. And, and when I put my flag up, that means that people pay homage to me or it means that I own the resources there. I guess what's the ultimate? Uh, it's your flag. It, there's, it, so it means it nothing really, but a flag. Yeah. OK, it really so it's, li it's literal control. Flag. Yeah. Well, it did yeah. have a dependency on uh, Super than Titan production, right? You can, yeah, yeah. So there is some productions to it. You can get some okay. bonuses out of owning the system, but the like other people can still go into your system, harvest the resources. They don't necessarily have to pay you anything. Okay. Um, right. You don't really lock any. It's legitimately just a flag. Right, and you have to defend those, and that's the source of conflict and what we call nullsec, right? Um, the Ignore the one with Serenity because I think that's the uh, that's the Chinese. Serenity story. is yeah. botched and is yeah. probably going to be dying. Yeah. So, but then you have factional warfare, right? Which is that area in the middle, the starter area. You can actually engage with your faction, whether you're Kaldari, Holy Galente. Shit. When, did, when yeah. did Kaldari take over all of Galente space? Because Kaldari um, rules. Okay. It's basically Galente were like, you know what, we've been. You know, we've been we've controlling been a lot of so stuff for so long, so hard. Yeah, they were basically yeah. like, we'll just see territory until you feel like you're, uh, you know, uh, big enough and powerful enough, and then we'll just, you know, Take rage, back. Like, rage through it all. Yeah. So so this is what you see all the big battles about, right? That, that exists in right. this space, right? But not only that, this is where all the tiny battles, all the 20-man roams happen, that you get smaller battles even. I mean, that all happens here and in, in some wormhole space, right? Which you, and, and this is where it gets interesting. This is where the game goes to new levels. But you don't have to be in control of anything to enjoy these levels, right? It just gets very interesting. So, yeah, I mean, these are the maps. And you can actually see the Alliance Influence map in particular is updated every day. And if you make it big enough, you can see all the systems that are won and lost and who gained them and who lost them. In what region they're in? There's, okay. um, there's. I think this ties into uh, the the core problem of Eve that in many other games everyone wants to know everything and be able to do everything and be part of everything, right? Whereas in Eve, when you specialize, you you don't ever have to watch the meta show. You don't have to uh, listen to Eric talk about. Uh, macroeconomics uh, you don't have to take part in uh, faction warfare you can do what you want to do but only if you accept and acknowledge that you will never know and understand these other parts of the game and in other games it feels like everyone wants to do everything well that may be why eve has lasted so long because well, when you get bored go do something else yeah and and just the, the, the yeah. standing joke about the fact that is it 80 or 90 percent of the the player base actually don't know about the CSM or don't know uh, yeah. about uh, when when Burn is on? It's like they keep on docking every year like fucking lemmings, and it's like, how can you not know? It's been on Reddit, it's been in the news, Caleb, it's been on Caleb. the shows. <laughs> Caleb, I'm I'm genuinely confused. What is this uh, Burn Jita you're talking about? <laughs> Never mind. Just uh, undock yeah. your freighter. Um, yeah. Sometime next year. Oh, per per preferably. So, so, um, so, we might need to preference like what this is for nerds. Let's be honest. Like, mm -hmm. what what Burn Jeter is? Because <laughs> he may actually quote. Burn Jeter like, doesn't yeah. exist. It's a myth. It's just like that. It's just Griever Squad. It it doesn't yeah. exist. It's a it's a completely player 
uh, made up propaganda you know, story. Made up, made up, like, basically, it's an event that players decided to do, where um, essentially people, uh, essentially groups of players, um, fit themselves into very cheap but very effectively effective killing ships and go to high sec or go to this sort of like a very safe cheap, space very high dps destroyer class ships with generally close to range high dps weapons and they essentially go try to gank the biggest thing that they can find it's so the they, they find uh, things with burning wall street right yeah it, it's, it's basically like you know going in and sacking a uh, a city um yeah. So, so Gina, knowing that you're going to die and respawn and then get back into a ship and carry on doing it constantly. Yeah, so Jita is the main trade hub. So you've got giant freighters loaded with billions of its worth of stuff okay. going see. in and out all day long, right? So what happens is, um, and essentially but right supposedly, now, supposedly, we need, it, we need clarity. Supposedly happens. Supposedly it's happens. It's just a propaganda right. story. Right. So <laughs> you'll have fleets of hundreds of people come in they drop on top of these these freighters and by the way this is advertised for weeks in advance and people are still flying in with all this stuff right and they do it for two weekends so you'd think after the first weekend people would figure it out but they don't so i think what was it it reminds me of two, like animals in yeah. the sahara desert or something at the watering hole yep and, and exactly. the cats just sitting there waiting it's to kill them. That go every year to the same river and crosses it and gets killed by the crocodile. It's the crocodile. Right? Yeah, 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 the crocodile. Yeah. So Except the crocodile is, you know, not really hiding. Yeah, I mean, it's not like there aren't people in the system that you can absolutely see that are going to do this, right? So people drop on them and they blow them up. And the and the the great fun in comms is when you go and blow up a freighter for eleven billion isk, and an hour later, the same guy is in a new freighter with another eleven billion isk and stuff. And you blow them up a second time, right? And if you compare if you compare it to other games, right, where you have like general chat, so the the server you're on has a general chat, so everyone can be warned. That doesn't really happen in Eve. There's Gita, and then there's all the other systems. So you can't really have a universal uh, warning system. So people don't necessarily know until it's too late, right? So so this ties into what we were talking about earlier about how space is the, the compartmentalizing aspect of Eve and makes all mm. of this possible, right? The other thing that I like, the other event was Hulk Hulkageddon that was started, right? So there was a big problem with bots mining all day long, right? And people didn't like that. Then they, So they said, hey, we're just going to go across the universe and blow up every single miner that we can. And uh, and we'll get even with all the botting people and everything. So they called it Hulk Hulkageddon and they had it going on for a long time. Well, it wasn't just that. It was also there was also an economic aspect to that, like with the, uh, you know, the ice people were doing that, basically buying up all of that, all of the all of that ice, uh, all of that particular mm -hmm. commodity, in order to uh, extort a huge huge profits out of it. Oh, I made because I they... made I wasn't even a goon, and I made huge profits out of um, the ice interdiction. So they had ice yeah. miners, right, and they were. In, 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 in Eve, it's 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 okay to scan. Was that helium or was that um, oxygen topes that they were? Uh, it was box? everything. It, I got it. I made money off everything. It was it was it was it was galente and, and it was oxytopes because it was fueling all of the people's nexus and stuff. Oh, and the towers yeah. too because they got storage yeah. capacity bonuses. Yeah. So so you know I mean so everybody knows everybody who knew that this was happening bought all the all the product off the market. As this went on, the product kept going through the roof. So there's the whole market warfare. I think I made back in the day. I mean, it was it was big money to me back then, right? I made two billion dollars off ice products. It was amazing. So my favorite. So going back to like Bernjita, my favorite stories are like the 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 scamming where it's like, give me a hundred million isk and you'll be free from all ganking. Give me yep. all your character names too, and we'll make sure that none of your characters get ganked for an extra ten mil piece. Yep, and then you're just writing all their names down. You're watch listing all of them. You're just you're getting ready, and then bam. Yeah, mining permit in? sales. They're famous. Either that, or you pass it on to your friend. <laughs> Either that, or you pass it on to the to the to the next person, and then the next person ganks them and go and says, "Well, clearly you were you know you were scammed by someone who was pretending to be a legit dude. I'm the legit dude. <laughs> Baby, and then you scam them again." <laughs> 
This so is where that's, that's the thing too. about Eve, by the way, that I, I would really like to comment on is that like that sort of like lawless mentality that kind of occurs at times it mm. could be off-putting to some but to me is like what makes the game so special because honestly like, the lawlessness is what saves eve i really? think literally yeah, really, everyone from all the terrible mechanics that are still in place the the lawlessness is like the only thing really holding it together the, the, but, the, but that's not a mechanic that's a that's a policy from ccp right and this actually mm, was is. introduced in like 2004 the whole hands off approach, make the right? argument we do not is, we do not make any uh, intervention on your behalf. The sandbox is the sandbox. If you get scammed, if you get griefed, that's on you. If you don't like it, you have to log off and fuck off. Would right? that would that actually? I think that would be a part of the sandbox though, because that is in an option. Of well, I think that's why they keep it there, right? Yeah, they they but keep it other... there because in their eyes, that is part of the sandbox. Whereas if you the developer is supposed to step in and try and like curtail a system or whatever else that would be them interfering with the sandbox which is uh, you know goes against the essence of what a sandbox is right Developer let's take let's take the example exactly. from albion online where there was uh some horrible abuse uh, uh on the uh, on this whole level with players going in and gaming uh the market and and basically taking advantage of game mechanics that were slightly unbalanced but then they have this huge win and then they manage to scam other players for their money and when all these players then went on the forums and cried about it they actually uh, reversed the, the 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 money right and and gave it back and this is like when you don't have the hands off approach you destroy the ability of the players to actually create the sandbox uh, conflict and gameplay well like sandbox is inherently are like a balance on a tightrope of of having the tightrope where you could fall off and hurt yourself and the developer is putting you know cushions and padding for you after you fall it's like you 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 want well, to cushion people somewhat right but you don't want to just completely have absolutely well, no way for them to be able to fall back and recover right well taking that analogy um like i think one of the things that uh, happened in uh albion online like uh, I think the developers kind of wanted to go come in and basically say, like, you know, we want to keep the whole kind of being able to fall off the tightrope, but we don't want the tightrope to break randomly. You know, and I think that's the the way they kind of saw it was like the mechanic that was being abused was equivalent to the tightrope breaking while someone was on top of it. It just feels like all all the other PvP games tend to cater to the player base when they cry enough, right? So even if it's only small changes, it, it, they, the developers are going in there and changing things on behalf of uh, victims, right? And not considering that the victim thing is maybe what makes a PvP game actual possible. Right, well, I think there's a difference between social engineering and actually exploiting, right? Like, I, yeah. I, I have a little bit of a story like this that you guys would probably laugh and say that's a normal day in Eve, but this got me banned out of a game where, it, it, funny enough, it was in Star Wars Galaxies where it was reaching kind of the end of NGE. I knew the game wasn't going to last, so I was, like, in a position where I was like, you know what, I want to do something fun. At the time, I was playing a smuggler, so I was role-playing a smuggler, right? And I came mm -hmm. up with this idea. I was like, well... And I know you guys have gambling in EVE. I don't know how regulated it is uh, and if it's banned, but... We no longer have gambling. Right, that's, right. What I, that's what I heard, so I figured that was the case. So th that's sort of what my plan was, was to create a lottery and where inside of the box, you open it and it has an item and you pay the same price, 5,000 credits per box, but you have the chance to get a rare. And here was I just thinking like, oh, you know, I'm sure I'll get a couple of people... I'll be able to afford my next pet or whatever to buy, right? I log on the next day and I remember looking at my bank account and I had like 1.5 billion credits, which at the time, you know, that was a lot of money. I was probably one of the richest people on the server. And sure enough, someone created a thread and said, this is not fair. I opened three or four of his boxes, even though I guarantee you're going to win something, but you're not maybe not going to win what you want, right? That's the whole layer of a lottery. Uh, and And sure enough, the devs were like, that's bad, and they banned me. Um, it luckily. took 13 years for Eve to get to that point where they actually okay. made it illegal. Because we actually had uh, gambling since at least 2004 with BIG. 
which was the first actual gambling uh, service in EVE. And that got com outcompeted with things like uh, Soma and then the whole Soma uh, scandal. And then, of course, the casino wars, right? So it took a massive war. Basically, your story, if you had taken all your money and applied it geopolitically in the metagame and tried to win something or kill uh, the biggest entity, right? This is exactly mm. what happened in EVE. The, the, the richest players were the uh, people with the gambling sites, and they actually threw all their money at the Imperium, and that's now been dubbed the Casino Wars. And that's when CCP said, okay, it's true, this is unassailable wealth. You can't actually do anything against these people, so there's not an equal playing field, so we have to just ban gambling entirely. Their reasoning seems to make sense to me. I mean, kind of like uh, we were saying earlier, back to the tightrope thing. You don't want the tightrope to just you know, crack on you and, and completely go away. So you got to re retain some of the integrity of kind of the game. And, and in a game about economy, which a sandbox game inherently should be about, uh, you've got to be very careful because, you know, another example, uh, bringing up Darkfall, they had this problem where there was this thing called an astrolabe which was essentially used to create boats. Well, people found out about these astrolabes, a mob that dropped them early on in beta. And so they just farmed a bunch of them. And this guy held on to like hundreds of these. He was like, trust me, these are going to be worth something someday. And everyone was like, all right, all right. You know, no one believed him, right? And sure enough, everyone wanted to get involved in boats because they wanted to just start doing sea towers, you know, which were a way to make money. And uh, sure enough, you know, this guy started selling insane amounts of astrolabes and making insane amounts of boats. And they became so wealthy that they had to intervene and they looked into it and they found out that they had been exploiting. And so, <laughs> yeah, I think um, devs do have to listen to complaining. But when, it, when, when there's a game that's like so niche already, like a game like EVE or any type of sandbox uh, PvP MMO, especially, which are inherently niche, the developer needs to listen, but they also need to kind can of stick you, can, to their guns. Can you please pronounce niche correctly? No. <laughs> niche. Niche. No. Niche. Yeah, niche. 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 Yeah. Artist. niche. If niche. you want a game to be historical like Eve, where things actually matter on a long-term scale and things actually shift and change every day and every month and every year, if, if you have a policy of, of trying to do rollbacks, you destroy that sandbox, right? So I think that's the difference between CCP and other game developers, that CCP realizes that the main core game is the, the, the long game, and they will not do rollbacks. They might tweak things and change them and fix them, especially if there's exploits involved. Uh, you, we, we know about um, how goons used to do... Uh, um, the moon Do thing. Though, are you are you trying to I mean, trigger me on the how badly they handled the? Race? Was, I mean, are we are we going to be new racers? It was it was the resources. Wars. Wars. Could you let me finish? Uh, in the in the, back in the day, there was a, an exploit on passes where you could basically infinitely farm moon goo, and it mm -hmm. was basically free, right? And this was considered an exploit, but you can't call it an exploit until CCP officially goes out and say now it's an exploit. Because otherwise, it's just a feature. And there was no rollback. There was a fix. And all the benefits from that, with the exception of people that kept doing it, these people got banned. And it's the same with the with the zombie farming, with the, with ghost farming, right? Um, with mm -hmm. SP skill training. When CCP comes in and says, this is an exploit, then you are, uh, it's bannable. Before that, it's legal. Did, um... I would agree. Talking about scamming and some of the things that go on in Eve, um, Nerd Slayer, have you did you ever read the article about the uh, the the scam that became a rescue mission in Eve? Yes, yeah, I do remember this article. I don't remember the exact details. That was a while ago. I'm pretty sure. Oh, it was. It was. It was about a year ago. Actually, about okay. a year ago, a year and a month ago, to be honest. Um, That's oddly specific. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think one of the challenges in Eve is. Um, one of the things, one of the goals in Eve is to just be in something that made an article, hmm. right? So for instance, we had the, um, most people ever involved in an online battle, right? Made Guinness book of world records, right? And everybody's right. name was, was up there. 
and just being able to say, hey, I, I was actually in that. Right. Okay, I couldn't undock, but I was in it. <laughs> right. You know, um, you know, you say that, like, I was literally in that situation. Like, yeah. I was in there, and I was docked in somewhere, oh. because my uh, my mods, all like, when I jumped in, my mods were all offline. I had to dock somewhere and try yep. and online my mods. I couldn't undock after that. <laughs> <laughs> but you were there. I was yeah, there. Right? Was you there. can say I was there. Yeah, I, I, it's like, I was there chilling out in the bar. It's like BR tag. It's like anything, right? But those things happen in that big donut area, right? That we were talking about on uh, on sob dot space. Um, but yeah, I mean that's one of the weird things about Eve. Um, I don't know. I've played Eve since two thousand six or two thousand four. I forget which one. Two thousand six, I think. Um, and I and I have played all the other games, right? And I play them for a couple months, and then I'm bored. Right, and I've taken I've taken time off from Eve, you know I've taken three month three months off from Eve, you know four months off from Eve, but I always kept my my uh, my players training, right, and so that I could do something good when I came back because you always knew you were coming back, and it's it's one of the weird weird things about Eve. In fact, there are people who only it, three months. Well, yeah. Well, in, yeah. In, invariably, you end up missing the people yeah. that you fly with, not really the game. So you end up kind of coming back. Absolutely. Really because you want to actually, you know, converse with your friends. Well, there are actually people who only will sub to Eve when there's a big war. They unsub from Eve, and then all of a sudden there's a big war. The big email goes out or whatever communication goes out, and then all of a sudden all these subs come in. And they participate in the war, and then when the war is over, they leave. It's amazing. I've never been in a game like this. This is so weird. I do, I do see some of the things that you said, though, Nerd Slayer. Um, particularly, um, I share your concerns about some of the staff leaving and, and how they're, you know, turning over staff and things like that. And the in the in the age of the game, right? I've aired those conversations on this show many times, right? Um, the question right. is. And, and I've said the same thing you said. Eve has failed at pretty much everything else they've tried to do except Eve. And the question is, was Eve the lark? And are they just lucky? Um, and if another company or CCP got smart enough on how to market or how to alter Eve in subtle ways that preserved what it was but made it greater, would it end up being a more successful game for many, many years? I, I don't know the answer to that, but it's, it's a great great i think they're great things that you 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 brought up in your video though i mean my, my personal idea my personal thoughts on that are uh, a case of you know eve could have gone wrong in so many different ways down the line but it seems as though ccp have kind of either learnt or kind of you know in some sort of darwinistic way um figured out that uh, they should do this and shouldn't do that when it comes to keeping the game alive and you know it's those 15 years of you know keeping the game going keeping it running um that i think steads them in like keeps them in in good stead for you know uh the future in comparison to people who who want to try and put together a brand new game like as much as i as much as i, I love the idea of star citizen and stuff like that like there is a lot that goes into creating a biome as you know as you know with the callback to what Caleb was talking about that isn't apparent on initial inspection um in the same way that you know there is a lot that goes on inside of eve to keep eve alive that isn't apparent on your initial kind of inspection or initial investigation of what eve, what makes eve tick and I think someone coming it. in and trying to actually make it, like from a in in a, fre in a like in a fresh game, like say Starcraft, uh, Star uh, Citizen, that if you don't, you know, if you if you make the wrong turn uh, in a you know violent enough way, that whole game is just going to die. But you pointed it out, McLeod, yeah. a little bit, right? When you mentioned Dar Darwinian evolution, right? It's mm. like winning by failing, right? And it's pretty much the same with goons. They win by failure because they learn and but, then yeah, they adapt. They learn. And, yeah. and, and CCP has done the same. And it's, it, it's kind of maybe what other game developers 
and other players fail to understand that fa failing is part of the game. Right. I think something that isn't mentioned enough, though, and I'm sure anybody who understands kind of the way economics work would, would get this, is like, Eve did something, I think, that really you've never seen quite done in the same way, maybe not on the same scale. And that's what's like, when, when, when they created their game, they slowly iterated and changed and made changes. And they really just, they were obviously dedicated to their game and to their vision of what their game was. And I'm sure they changed it in certain ways, but they never really wavered away from that. And I think their dedication to their idea, but also their project and their willingness to just kind of move slowly, make incremental you know, changes and improvements, really is why, to me, it's such a fascinating game, but not, not just a game, but a story. Because like, the thing about Star Citizen is when you've got all this big money, right? And you're coming into the market and you're trying to make a uh you know you're trying to sh to basically sh shake things up right you're trying to make waves they can't afford to have an okay launch right they can't like with the amount of money behind that game they can't have an okay launch they need to have a good launch they need to have a good first year because i think that much money into something is just going to be i'm not saying it's going to fail but i'm saying it could be a spectacular failure that i don't think that they would have the luxury of being able to just fix you know what i mean like Eve mm. did. Eve started kind of small and went up. You started more very and humbly, more. right? Exactly. And I think mm -hmm. what what's kind of related to this is um, there was a couple companies that tried to re restart Darkfall, and one of them in particular, uh, New Dawn, was the name of the type of Darkfall. They basically didn't say this like straight up, but they were communicating that, oh, we're basically going to take the Eve approach. And like my argument was to them is like, you guys don't have enough time to take the Eve approach. There's all these other games that are coming out, like you guys are going to be forgotten. Your your tech is essentially too old at this point. It's like if Eve were to launch again right now as the game they were in 2003 and say, hey, we're just going to take things slow. They wouldn't have the time, right? But they did back then, probably because of the way the market was and because everyone around them was dying. But my, my fear is that not that Star Citizen specifically is successful, because I'm not convinced, um, but another sci-fi MMO is successful. And then people are going to start to say, you know what? Maybe if we can just, like someone was saying earlier, iterate a little bit on the, the gameplay aspects and keep the core, then we can make this much better game. And maybe Eve won't die immediately, because I don't think it will. Uh, CCP doesn't seem like that kind of company. Um, but it, it would have a very slow and kind of forgetful death at that point as the market just moves on, you know? But that's, that's my fear and kind of the fears that I raised in that video that I made. I think there's a catch-22 in what you're talking about, right? Because the fact that Eve grew that slow is what created the ecosystem. If you try to launch an ecosystem, like Star Citizen wants, pretty much they got Eve Henry, right? They want mm -hmm. Star Citizen to be like Eve, except right. that's not going to happen because of what you said, but also because of an effect called a tropic ca cascade, where if you bring a lot of uh, people into a game at the same time, and the game is supposed to be an ecosystem they're supposed to be interdependent right and then when some people leave which is what you see in all mmos right after the, the, the first two months doesn't yeah. work. the e ecosystem will collapse so it's bound to fail at least on an ecosystem and sandbox uh, perspective it could be a great game and pretty much all the fans of of star citizen are fans because of the points that you make that are lacking in eve right that's what people what now right. as, a, as, a, as a player, but they will not get the sandbox, they will not get the ecosystem, they will not get the long-term playability if they do not have some sort of control or stop gaps to make sure that the ecosystem can sustain this huge influx of players and then the potential uh, exodus, right? Right. Yeah, I see. I see Star Citizen really, I just don't know how dedicated they are to making that same type of economy and same type of like ecosystem as you as you say, like, I'm not sure if that's really what like they want, right? I'm not sure what they want. They don't even know what they want, really, which is like the main issue. Uh, I think it's you guys have a lot more confidence. what he's always dreamed about, right? Pretty much since he made Privateer, he wants this big interdependent uh, system where, where where players are competing with each other and and shipping goods he's been wanting to make an eve like game since that 
you guys have this a lot more it. confidence in Star Citizen than I do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, we've been going about an hour and a half now. I want to go around the room for kind of uh, uh, last going. thoughts. So can I'll I, start. Can I just close with a question to Nerdslayer? Because sure, sure. Shoot one more of, question. Uh, relevant. Uh, being here and learning about all these metagame things, would you consider playing it on the meta level and coming back and trying it not to play the the one we won or the, the the actual pvp but to take part in all the social stuff and the content creation and all the metagame i think uh well first off i'll say that a lot of the stuff that you guys uh told me today were things that i wasn't like i was i didn't know but i wasn't surprised by like in a positive way just being like of course that game has that right it's like more things that the game has that other games don't have but I, for me that sort of game it, it's and I, I think that's why it really resonated with me when eric was saying that he couldn't quit the game essentially was that it's kind of one of those games where i feel like you, you don't really you know put your feet into and tap it into the pond if you're a new player you really got to get all the way in and that's how i am personally like I, my personality i'm very much like once i get into a game I'm like all into the game, you know, I, I'm really going to dedicate myself. And, you know, Camelot Unchained is playable in 50 days, man. I'm, I've been trying not to play any other MMOs uh, just because of that. I, I just, I'm ready to to see what the next generation of MMOs have to offer. And if it, if it sucks and if, you know, Star Citizen's a failure and all these other games are a failure, it'll be depressing. Maybe I'll play EVE Online then and in my de depressed state. It. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I just think that there's too many games coming out, you know. <laughs> What's up, that? Like, well, use your fallback. No, that's good. Yeah, he's, that's he's, what Eric just it's said. Like, right? It's like it's even, like even your safety even net. The spouse that you always stay with because there's nothing better out there. Well, if you that's actually ask up. my wife, Eve might be the evil mistress. So, you know. <laughs> and by the way, the lines it, are blurred. Funny, funny thing is right. So. I'll come home and wife is, are you going to go, uh, are you going to play with your girlfriends? She refers <laughs> to all my court mates, all of you guys, you're my girlfriends. And uh, that's, that's where I well, go. Well, I mean, take out to dinner first. Uh, yeah, well, I try to say, you know, no, the, the beer drinking buddies, not the girlfriends, right? Yeah, but it doesn't work. So To get you around in at some point. Yeah. So Again, let's go around. Again, taking out to dinner first. Uranus, you're up for your, uh, your, your, your one last thing. All right, Nerd Slayer, uh, I have a request. Can you do a post-mortem on Destiny? Because I think it's or I think it's it's about time we call that that Destiny is dead. Please do Destiny. And also, I have a question, and this might kind of go a little bit over. Um, what do you think the biggest risk is to Eve Online at this point, as far as it staying alive or it slowly starting to die in the the void? I think it's um, it's fear based on past mistakes of wanting to further implement. Like, we, we all know CCP wants to, right? They, they've proven that on numerous occasions. Yeah, it hasn't been successful, but, like, you know, they've got that project uh, Nova, it's called, right? Um, yeah. So they're, they're not giving up. I think they understand that, you know, memes aside, Star Citizen is not going to launch for a while. So I think they have time. And, and in fact... They have an interesting position in that they can kind of see what they're offering before they really put the game out necessarily and they can kind of see maybe where because i don't think eve's focus should be let's create a fully realized 3d world like i don't think that should be their focus i think it should be like caleb and i have talked about where it's like just small steps you know just and, and they've already talked about that with project nova just make it to where you can fight on an actual ship right and then you can start to evolve the gameplay past that point and I still think they have enough time to do that. It doesn't need to be like a they changed this year or something type of thing. Uh, like I'm not a doomsayer. I, I just certainly think that I just hope that the community especially isn't just too afraid of any type of change and that they're not going to be you know welcoming of the new things to come because really, I mean, at the end of the day, if Eve could get the planetary aspects right, I mean, who are we kidding? everybody would trust eve to succeed over star citizen because look at all these bad things that star citizen has you know feature creep budgets too large and all this other stuff right but eve already has a core game that works if it could just have these other aspects then it would just i think it would be the sci-fi mmo that could continue to live on 
for who knows how long. Already, Caleb will go to you. I'd just like to say that Hilma would stay at you forever, right? So that's, that's the timeline. He likes uh, his royalty I, check. I, I, I think it's fascinating uh, to have Nerdslayer on because he is now also the official game development obituary <laughs> that pretty much calls a game dead when it's dead and even takes <laughs> requests. Yeah. That's yeah. It, it's well, uh, I kind of forced my request on him. It, it, it's it's more like a yeah. It's a forced request. Well, yeah. Destiny is certainly uh, a game. I think the the hard part for me, and this is just like personal content stuff, but like it it's, it's hard been... to know what the right time is to do it. You know, in some cases, when's the right time to declare something dead? And if and you I ask if you ask R slash Destiny the game, it's three <laughs> months ago. Right, but I, I I'm more interested in I guess you know factual aspects. So I I need I would need to look into more of the details. I know that they had a really good launch in terms of like their sales. They sold probably I think the best that year or second best that year. Uh, but I don't know if those players are even remotely still playing the game. So that's that's think, the stuff that I would look into. I mean, I think you could probably definitely say that uh, Just Survive is dead now. Oh, and you read us. If if your standard is when R uh, uh, R E when Reddit says so. when Reddit says something, <laughs> then or any of the the social media or forums, then Eve has been dead for fifteen years. It has been. How many times has it years? died in that regard? Like it's got more more lives than the than a cat. It. I don't think it. It's just always been in a constant state of dying. It's a zombie <laughs> game. Anyway. So yeah, so uh, Nerd Slayer, last words from you. Uh, well, first I want to thank everybody um, for having me today. And also, I kind of was expecting more hostility. I'm not saying that you guys are bad or mean people, but uh, I like hostility when oh, it comes you were, to... Oh, you were asking for hostility? <laughs> You're a piece of shit, and I hope you uh, move your hands in some lawnmower accident. Oh, God. Yeah, I was thinking... Right, there it goes. There it goes. That's, that's a good place to start. But yeah, I was thinking more in terms of... Uh, you know, discourse, but it seems like um, you guys have probably been thinking about this a lot more uh, or a lot longer than I have. <laughs> so you already sound like your thoughts are kind of there, you know? No, I think we come from the perspective that if, if we came here to beat you over the head about something we disagreed with, why have you on, right? Why would you it, it be would here? be? It's not the way we like to, to talk about things. Yeah, like, well, what's the way. point of having you? What's the point of having you on if, like, you know, at the end of this, you feel like, oh crap, I'm not going to do that again? Like, they're all on the <laughs> no. battles. <laughs> no, we we want you to come back. <laughs> right? Yeah, and, and, and we don't. I also think. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, we don't always no. talk about Eve. We talk about other games sometimes too. So that's where blending right. the other games in and things like that has because been Eve has been players... a very Eve thing today. Yeah. Eve play Eve players play all kinds of other games. When I get mm -hmm. bored, I mean, I'm going to go play Planet Side 2, you know, because I just enjoy that quick pickup, go shoot things, right? Or or a myriad of other games. So, yeah. I've been playing Rust quite a lot recently, so, you know. Yeah, you cheat on Eve all the time, McLeod. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. So, yeah, she's a mean mistress, but we cheat on her all the time, right? That's terrible. Um, am I going to get my steady. final? I, I want to go. Kind of go. Um, like my little final thought, my little final uh, words are going to be uh, vote brisk for CSM. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then literally go to Google and type in brisk for CSM. That's brisk with a C at the end. Mm. You'll see who we're talking about. He's an absolute legend. And he's also, uh, yeah, and he, he also drinks uh, some uh, extremely nice stuff as well. Um, Why would I want to vote and... some weird sugar juice onto the CSM? Because he's an absolute legend. That's why. I was trying to write and just to literally, track. literally, just literally, just Google uh, brisk for CSM, and you'll see how much of a legend he is yourself. And the the only other thing that I wanted to uh, say is actually ask me to say something. Um, considering you have played Eve, not you know on and off, um, and it does seem as though you have played a, a fair amount of the PVE kind of aspect of Eve. Like, how many times have you? save the damsel in distress to the like what was, what was your tipping point where you're like oh, I have to save her again like did have you did you play that like uh, that particular mission at all you talking about the uh the starter missions uh i the, think the it was station I, missions? 
Yeah, the the kind of station missions, the NPC ones. Like, did you well, ever see, do the damsel in distress one? Yes, and and th that stuff reminds me of uh, X Terran conflict. Funny enough, because like you remember, <laughs> you could get m missions from the stations in that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> that's that's some, that's my answer. I do remember that, but starter quests of being, I don't really hold that stuff against a game, because. I mean, let's be honest, when's the last time that quests have really been written in a super great and not repetitive way? I feel like, unfortunately, sure. they, they kind of end up just devolving to that anyway, right? Funcom, the secret world. Yeah, that's that's true. Funcom does have really good uh, ambience, right? So I'll wrap it up by saying thank you very much for uh, for coming on the show, Nerd Slayer. It's been, it's been really great to have you. Um, really enjoyed your videos and your in your different perspective, especially on Eve, in your uh, in your video. So, I really appreciate it. And unlike uh, McLeod, vote the goon party line, vote the goon party ticket. Just you click guys. and follow <laughs> the three step directions, and you know. I always think people who actually believe Matthias putting a gun in my head. Yeah, that's that, that's one of the interesting things, Nerd Slayer. <laughs> When we vote for the CSM, people have actually mathematically figured out if you vote for these people in this order, we'll maximize our gains on the CSM. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> That's I kind of funny. Oh, and I forgot. Delve number one. Delve number one. Thank you. I, I Thank love you. trolling people who actually believe that I have, like, Matani, like, with a gun behind my head telling me to vote for the goon ballot. Do, do, it, it's not a gun. It is. It is funny. It's funny. I've never had more freedom than I have in Goonstorm, so it's great. All right. With that, I'll wrap it up. And thank you, everybody. And it's been a great show. And uh, we will see everybody next week. Not sure when this will uh, telecast, but it will be out there. And thank you again, Nerd Slayer. And everybody, everybody, say bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. And.